Hello and welcome to Agenda 2030. I am Toyin Nkamyang John. As the global community begins the countdown to the decade of actions for the SDGs, stakeholders in Nigeria have continued to rev up actions. On this episode, we'll unveil some of the efforts after the news from across the world with Adesua Osui to stay with us. Has the world celebrated the International Women's Day on the 8th of March with the theme Each for Equal geared towards addressing gender parity gaps? Nordic countries have again made it to the top of the Global Gender Gap Index. The countries have been named the best in the world at closing gender gaps. Following valuation of their Human Capital Index, the involvement of women in their economies, as well as the social safety nets they have in place to make it possible for parents, especially women, Women to combine work and family. In Norway, 95% of women are in the workforce, 86% in Iceland, compared with 55% of women and 78% of men in the workforce globally. One third of all food produced globally worth nearly $1 trillion is wasted every year. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, the wastage in food has been blamed for the spike in hunger as well as environmental degradation globally. In Italy, a recent government report put food waste per family as high as 145 kg per year. Different countries of the world are implementing different measures to curb the food waste. In Italy, the government has passed a law to give tax breaks to firms that donate food to the needy instead of dumping it. The government is also spending over $1 million on research to extend shelf life of food items. Also in France, supermarkets have been banned from throwing away unsold food but are compelled to donate it to charities and food banks. Also, South Korea has has made it illegal to throw away food waste. The Asian country now recycles 95% of all food waste, turning them into fertilizer, animal feed and biogas. Some Indian fishermen have come up with a sustainable innovative way to recycle ocean trash by turning abandoned nets into eco-friendly surfboards, an initiative that is not only helping to clean up the ocean, but is financially rewarding. The fishermen retrieve abandoned fishing nets from the ocean. In addition to old and out-of-use nets, they can lay their hands on. They then clean and granulate them. The granulated nets are then processed under stringent parameters into high-quality hardware, which is then made into eco-friendly surfing birds. Ghost nets are a scourge to the ocean and can take up to 600 years to decompose. 46 to 70 percent of surface debris in some of the world's oceans are fishing gears, while more than 10,000 sea animals get killed while caught in abandoned nets every year. In May this year, Nigeria will be playing host to the Global Gold World Cup. The game, which is the first women's activist football tournament created out of the United Nations 17 Global Goals for Sustainable Development, will hold in Lagos between May 15 and 17. This video gives us an insight into what the Global Goal World Cup is all about. We are the Global Goals World Cup, an activist football championship. We use the power of sports to connect girls and women around the world to take action on the United Nations 17 Global Goals. Our teams are motivated by their love for football and the desire to change the world. This is not your average World Cup. Sometimes, if you want to change the world, you need to change the rules. So we did. Our champions know that scoring Global Goals takes more than football skills. It takes action, creativity, and the power to mobilize others. We give four different points for action, creative style, crowd, and goal scored. Like Spectacular 8, UAE, playing to raise awareness of how cigarettes damage marine life. Hoodie Champs, Kenya, walks from village to village, playing football to foster a democratic and peaceful society. Equality League, USA. They are fighting to end gender discrimination in sport and challenge the stadium ban for women in Iran. As a Global Goals World Cup partner, you will leverage your sustainable development mission to join a community that is changing lives. 
Olafu Eliasson, manifesting the light and hope in the unique Global Goals World Cup trophy, and Little Sons as medals for winning teams. UNDP, working with us to put the Global Goals on the agenda in communities and for decision makers all across the world. SAP, amplifying the global impact by bringing purpose to innovation and pushing for gender balance in the tech communities. Our hosting partners understand the power of sport to turn the global goals into a citizen agenda. We are building a new World Cup for a better world. So far, we are taking the ball to five continents, engaged thousands of women and enlisted the support of national governments, ambitious companies and forward-thinking organizations. Each year, we join up in New York City during the Unger Week to honor our Global Goals champions. We will play until the Global Goals have been reached. In Nigeria, the organizers of the tournament, 17 Goals Africa Initiative, and the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs have been mobilizing stakeholders for the Global Goal World Cup scheduled to hold in May. President Advisor on SDGs, Princess Adejake Orilukwe Adefulure, who symbolically received the tournament ball on behalf of President Muhammad Buhari, promised to give all the necessary support to make the tournament a success. The concept that we believe will help us encourage young women, especially the young girls, encourage them, bring them together, create a lot of teamwork, and give them opportunity to know that there's absolutely nothing they cannot achieve in life. So we appreciate this and we want more of this collaboration, more of this participation from private sector, from young people, youth organization, women organization, academia, name it, private sector group, civil society organization, so that they can come together with this type of idea that will unite us because we don't want to be divided any longer. Princess Adejoke Orilukwe Adefulire thereafter led the organizers to present the ball to the governor of Lagos State, the host state, Governor Babajide Sonwolu, and the ambassador of United States of America, Ambassador Mary Beth Leonard. In receiving the ball, Samuel Olu, who became the first political leader in West Africa to receive the Global Gold Ball, said his government remained committed to creating local and global partnerships that will boost his administration's effort in achieving sustainable development goals critical to improving residents' well-being and human capital index. At the U.S. Embassy, Ambassador Mary Beth Leonard pledged support for the initiative designed to empower women and girls taking action for a just and equitable future. The ambassador disclosed that the U.S. mission in Nigeria has so far sent two women to one of its most prized activities, the ESPN Global Sports Mentoring Program which empower women, girls, and marginalized persons by pairing international emerging women leaders with senior female executive at top U.S. organizations for a five-week mentorship experience. Spearheaded by an SDGs ambassador in Nigeria, Joke Silver, the Global Goal World Cup is an all-women five-a-side football tournament, and the winning team is a team that combines sensational and creative activism with football most spectacular. One of the main, um, the focal point of this, of the World Cup, of this particular World Cup, which is an amateur World Cup for women and adolescents, is goal five, gender equality, and the central point of it is unity. And um, gender equality is integral to the achievement of the 17 goals. Once you can achieve gender equity, you can achieve unity, you, you encapsulate 
the the 17 goals they the 17 goals become even easier easily more achievable part of its objectives is to build and manage an impactful platform using sports entertainment media technology events and other identified creative and effective tools to drive the awareness and advancement of sdgs the global goal work up uh, is a five side tournament for women. Um, this tournament started in 2016 in Denmark and uh, it has been playing in almost uh, 25 countries now, um, including Kenya and Uganda. Um, the whole idea of the uh, Global Go World Cup is for us to be able to use entertainment like sports to drive campaign and awareness of sustainable development goal in Nigeria and across West Africa. The tournament is for both private sector, uh, for NGOs, for religious organizations, for government, uh, for schools, institutions to participate by uh, uh, setting up a team of five or eight to play against other organizations. It's a way to help women to become aware of the Sustainable Development Goals and also help them to take action so that come 2030, we would have achieved all the targets set um, by the UN um, for these goals. To qualify as a team, Intending participants are required to choose one of the 17 UN Global Goals to play and take action for. On match day, the 5 to 8 women team will play matches the last 6 minutes. 17 Goals Africa is an organization set up to inspire, engage and empower everyone to support the realization of SDGs in Nigeria and by extension Africa. And in line with the national policy on water, sanitation and hygiene by the federal government of Nigeria, the Gardena state government, through its Ministry of Public Works and Infrastructure, recently hosted stakeholders on a three-day retreat on the revitalization of the wash sector in Kaduna state. The program, which brought together development partners, was organized to collectively seek ways of providing safe and portable water to the people of Kaduna State, especially those in the rural areas. In her opening remarks, the Commissioner of the Kaduna State Ministry of Public Works and Infrastructure, Honorable Balaraba Aliu Inua, said that the state government has a strong political will to restructure the WASH scheme in the state. She further said that Kaduna State has already established an agency on WASH while increasing its financial commitment and investment in this sector. Kaduna State intends to regain its lead not only of the WASH sector achievement but in all aspects of development. This is the more reason we have resolved to use this opportunity to put in place strategies and a state roadmap to enable us to revitalize the WASH sector, to enhance our achievement to meet up with the WASH National Action Plan. In her goodwill message, the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, Princess Adejoke Orilukwe Adefulure, commended the Kaduna State Government for being at the forefront of pursuing sustainable development projects. She emphasized the need for the provision of safe and portable water, adding that safe water remains the surest way to staying healthy and productive. She also applauded Governor El Rufai for his effort in fostering gender equality by having large number of female appointees in his administrative cabinet. Indeed, the concept of water, sanitation and hygiene is well embedded in SDGCs 1 and 2, that is ensuring availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. The six targets taken together aim to achieve universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all, as well as to achieve adequate and equitable sanitation and hygiene for all. Thus, this retreat couldn't have come at a better time than now, 
as we just commence the decade of action on sustainable development goals all over the world. Aduna State Government has been demonstrating commitment to the attainment of sustainable development in all ramifications. Kudos to the Governor of Kaduna State. In his keynote address, the Governor of Kaduna State, ably represented by the State Commissioner for Education, Malam Shehu Makarfi Mohammed, assured of the state government's commitment to ensuring that the WASH policy succeed in the state. He said that government will prioritize the tackling of open defecation and provision of access to basic water, especially in the rural communities. He added that the event was organized to provide a comprehensive action framework as well as identifying implementation gaps while looking at ways to partner with stakeholders for a total revitalization of the WASH policy in Kaduna State. We are aiming to achieve 100% access to safe and affordable WASH services by 2030. The ambitious sustainable development goal aims not only to expand access to basic water services but also close gaps in service quality with an eye toward long term sustainability. In attendance were representatives of the Kaduna State House of Assembly, Federal Ministry of Water Resources, Kaduna State Water Corporation, and officials of the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals. The Parliament is one of the key stakeholders in the implementation of the SDGs. In Nigeria, the Parliament, both at the national and sub-national level, have been effectively mobilized for strategic collaboration in the attainment of the goal. In furthering this effort, the House of Representatives Committee on SDGs recently paid a walking visit to the office of the UNDP resident representative to consolidate partnership and seek ways of financing the goals. As the global community enters the Decade of Action for the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, has said that Nigeria will require additional $350 billion to achieve the global goal. Mohamed Yaya, the resident representative of UNDP in Nigeria, made these known while hosting the House of Representatives Committee on SDGs led by the chairman, Rotimi Agunsoye in Abuja. Yaya said that Nigeria is an extremely important country and that if Nigeria does not meet the SDGs, Africa will not meet the SDGs as most Africans live here. And the area that, that the country is making more improvement is lava bulb and then uh, uh, climate. Uh, you're maintaining uh, your work on the climate change because the government has been very aggressive in the NDC reporting. And as you probably heard, the president is very much committed to pushing the agenda around, uh, around uh, climate change. Um, but overall, uh, the challenge here is, again, to inspire you to say where where the country is and where we need to go in the next 10 years. Um, we, under the modeling, we looked at the financial gap. What is the financial gap? Uh, this model is owned by the government. It was launched uh, by President Buhari, the ISDG modeling. The total gap of 30, uh, $350 billion uh, to meet the SDGs, increase to what you have. So, from a parliamentary perspective, one of the things. Billion. Uh, yeah, sorry, 100 billion, which is about 10 billion a year. Exactly 10 billion a year more in the, in the, in the current public sector uh, uh, resources. So, the idea of expanding your fiscal space uh, is extremely important. And because the parliament controls the purse, there's no better people to talk about uh, the need to increase revenue allocation or revenue generation, sorry. Uh, to, the, to the government uh, uh, is critical. With, that, with your current budget uh, uh, levels, we will not achieve the SDGs. Essentially, that is the message. So, how do you, how do you increase the fiscal space for the federal government and even the state governments to collect more resources? So, the fiscal gap of 100 billion in the next 10 years, which about 10 billion a year, will be critical to achieve. So, for as the SDG committee, I think this is a good takeaway yes. in terms of the figures 
you will need to achieve the SDGs. The leader of the House Delegation and Chairman Committee on SDGs, Honorable Rointimi Agunshoye, assured of parliamentary support for the implementation of the goals, while also calling for more budgetary provision for the implementation of the SDGs. We have come to you for three major reasons. First, our visit is in recognition of the critical roles of UNDP as an integrator, knowledge, network, and purveyor of capacity and technical support for the implementation of SDGs. Secondly, we believe that as a parliament and as a committee vested with the functions of advocating, financing, monitoring, and oversight, as well as partnerships and resource mobilization, it is imperative to reach out to leading development partners to forge partnerships for the implementation of SDGs and to ensure that no Nigerian is left behind. Thirdly, and very important, we are here today to present our committee and its crucial mandate in achieving the SDGs and to be a leading parliamentary mechanism in Africa. As a committee in the parliament, that is the House Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, we are aware of the enormous task bestowed on us and have positioned ourselves to relentless, to relentless efforts geared at achieving such wondrous task of nation building, including the process of implementing the good globally acclaimed sustainable development goals. Agenda 2030. As a successful framework for the Millennium Development Goals, the global community rolled out a bigger, deeper, and more encompassing framework called the Sustainable Development Goals. Designed to transform our world, lift the poor out of poverty, as well as ensure inclusive and healthy society. On Agenda 2030, we take you on a media trip to the global destination of the future we want. With everyone on board, we focus on the people and their struggle, the civil society and their agitations, the government and hard development effort, the global development agenda, its 17 goals and 169 targets. We bring you all the deliberations, insightful conversations and high-level partnerships on the road to global destination. Agenda 2030, showing on this channel. Agenda 2030, living no one behind. I want to salute all the great Nigerian women for the work that you're doing to push for women's rights and gender equality. And I want to also salute the progressive men who are joining in this uh, movement and the young people who are going to drive this agenda going forward. We have just uh, commenced the decade of action. Uh, we have 10 years to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. That is a huge task, and uh, but I know that Nigerians can do it because if there's one thing that Nigeria is known for, it's for the innovation, it's for the drive, it's for the boldness and the ambition. So I'm really appealing to all of you, including and especially the young people, to take um, uh, charge of this uh, process and really drive for change to ensure that come 2030, we will have a Nigeria in which men and women can truly claim to have equality. Remember, you can always watch this program and other episodes by subscribing to our YouTube channels on youtube.com forward slash fresh news TV and youtube.com forward slash agenda 2030 TV. You can also watch the program live on Facebook. Just log on to www.facebook.com forward slash fresh news ng and www.facebook.com forward slash agenda 2030 TV. Follow us on all our social media platforms at agenda 2030 TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Remember to drop a comment and share with your contacts. Do use the hashtag Agenda2030 and hashtag Agenda2030TV. And that has been the size of our program this week. Do keep a date with us next week as we bring you another refreshing episode. I am Toi Nkamyang John. Thank you for staying with us. Music